Hey folks, how you doing today? Today's a beautiful uh, June, mid-June day. It's Father's Day, and the weather outside is just absolutely perfect. And uh, I've decided to take on a little project here that I've been meaning to do. I've got my uh, XT250 here, and uh, I need a power supply. Uh, my Himalayan, I've had a power supply for a few years now where I can plug in my cameras and uh, phones to charge it while I'm driving. And operates off a relay, so I've decided to do the same thing for my FT50. So, what do we need to uh, install this project? Well, let's turn around and I'll look at the parts that I have. First thing we need is a UP USB um, waterproof module here. You can get them on uh, Amazon, eBay. They're relatively cheap. I think I paid less than $10 for this one. Um, we need a bracket uh, to install it with. I manufactured this uh, yesterday out of some stock I had laying around the house. Um, some wiring that came uh, with the unit. I need mine to operate off a relay. Um, if you just hook this up directly to the battery, it will drain your battery down uh, every day. And so after a few days, you're going to have a dead battery. So this relay will be hooked up to the uh, Ignition, one of the circuits that uh, when the switch is turned on, it powers it, throw the relay, and then we'll get the power from the battery. Got some wire and some protectant to go on that wire. So all those parts, um, it's less than 10 bucks for a USB part. The uh, relays, uh, <laughs> I had to buy a pack of five of them, I think, for like 12 bucks or something like that. And um, They're relatively cheap. The wire I had laying around in the garage and uh, the other supplies. So uh, let's see, where are we going to mount this thing? Let's go over and take a look at the uh, 250. I'll tell you, one of the problems with this bike is it's got a cramped uh, area up here. There's not a whole lot of room to mount uh, anything like this. So what I've decided to do is mount my bracket right here, and it'll project out this way right here, and uh, I'll be able to plug in right there. The wires will go down and around the back. So let's, let's put that bracket on there and see what it looks like. I've uh, picked this spot right here. If I put the bracket at a little bit of an angle here, it's not in, uh, doesn't interfere with my screen or my ability to get to the uh, key. So right there, it's got a little waterproof cover also has a uh, illuminated face and it also has a switch on it so you can turn the illumination off if at night or if you want to save uh, battery power or whatever you can turn it on and off but anyway right there I think it'll work I am going to trim this down here it uh, it is kind of big and bulky I think I'll just trim that down a little bit uh, shrink the size uh, I think it'll look a little bit better so now the next step uh, we got to figure out uh, where we're going to hook up the power and where we're going to put the uh, the relay at. So that's going to be our next step. Okay, on this XT250, the battery is located in this area right here. So I'm going to have to take uh, off this panel here, and I'll probably take this panel off. I'll probably take the seat off just to get that out of the way. We're going to go ahead and take those panels off and have access to the battery. We'll be able to fit the uh, relay in there and run the wires. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, underneath the seat here, you'll see two uh, eight millimeter nuts, uh, actually bolts. So we're going to go ahead and take these two bolts out and uh, remove the seat. All right, I've, I've taken out the two uh, eight millimeter bolts. Now we should be able to just lift the seat right up. Ah. All right, now we have access to the under seat area. The first panel here this small black one here, remove the screw and collar, pull out, there's a snap back here, pull out, and then just straight back, and it comes right out. Okay, this next panel, there's a screw or a bolt right back underneath here, right there. We'll remove that. The next bolt will be this one right here that we'll remove.
okay, on this panel here, you have to pop this out because this one locks into this one here. Be able to pop that out and then just lift straight up. So there's one bolt here, um, one bolt here, and then this one clip right there. This one comes. This last panel has a bolt right here. Oh, and it's a larger size, the 316th. Once that bolt's removed, pop this out, and then just pull. Now we have access to all our electricals here. We can figure out where to put a relay. Now that we have the uh, bike set up where we can get access to the wiring and the battery and whatnot, um, we have to figure out uh, where we're going to put this relay. And uh, let me explain how the relay works real quick. Uh, why are we using a relay? Well, if you hook up the uh, USB power supply directly to the battery, it, it has a constant drain on it. And so it will drain your battery if you don't use it every day. So what we're going to do is put a relay in it that uh, there's no power to the USB port until I switch on the ignition. And I'm going to tap into the tail light, and that will uh, engage the relay and send power to the USB port. So let's go ahead and look at a relay and see what a relay is. So here's the relay right here, and if you'll notice, there's, there's five connections on the back of the relay. And we're only going to use four of those. So here's a quick uh, illustration here. Uh, the top one here is where we feed the main battery supply to the relay. And the relay is actually a switch. So when the switch is off, there's no power going out, which comes out of the connection number 30. And that's going to be our power supply that's going to go to the uh, USB charging port up front. So what throws the switch here? Well, this feed right here, number 86, that's going to be the feed from the tail light. So when the ignition is turned on, the tail light turns on, power comes through this wire, and it flips an internal switch, and now you have the main power from the battery goes up to the USB port, and now you have power. And this one over here will be the ground. We can either go back to the battery or we can ground to the frame. But since the relay is going to be so close to the battery, we'll probably just go right back to the battery. So that's what the relay is all about. So the next step is finding out where, where is that uh, tail light. Uh, I've uh, looked at the schematic, and the tail light, uh, coming off the tail light, the black is the ground, and the blue wire is the power. And just before, that blue wire is actually a short wire. It's a brown and red. Then there's a junction and then it turns into blue that gives the power to the tail light. So we're going to find that either that blue uh, cable or we're going to find the brown and red power cable. So let's go ahead over to the bike and see what we can find. Okay, I've uh, popped open this connector and what we have here is a continuity light. And when that tip hits a 12 volt source, the light goes on. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the ignition on and then touch right inside there, I'm going to touch the probe that goes to the blue wire and we'll see if we have a, we'll see if we have a, a 12 volt there. So let's go ahead and turn the switch on. So, ignition on. We'll take this probe and we'll touch that. And there you go. And there's our power source. It goes to that blue wire right there. So that probe aligns with this blue wire. So we're going to go ahead and tap into that blue wire. Now there's two ways to tap into a electrical line. Uh, you can buy these at any uh, automotive parts store and you lay the wire in there and you close it and it uh, pokes into the wire and uh, gets you your power source. These are notoriously uh, not very good. <laughs> they, they're not good for the wires. Um, they get corrosion in them, and uh, you just try to, try to avoid this type here. The best one to use is called a PosiTap, and it's a much better uh, product. Um, it seals up a lot better, and you don't have issues uh, in, down the road. But they're, they're a little bit expensive, 
uh, much more expensive than these, uh, but they're well worth it. Okay, to use this kind of connector, you take the cap here and you slide it over the wire that you want to tap into. And then you can see here there's a very sharp little prong and it's threaded. So then you take this and you screw it on. And as you're screwing that, that prong is going to push into the wire and make contact with the internal wire there. Then when you cinch it all the way down, then you have a very secure, tight, connection that's not going to come loose. Okay, once you prepare the wire that you want to, uh, you, this is your power line and this is the feed on it. Take that, put it in place like that. Go ahead and screw that down. And now you have a very tight, secure fitting in both places that is not going to come loose, it's not going to corrode on you. So that, that's the uh, optimum way to uh, hook one of these up. So let's go ahead and do that uh, on the bike. All right, uh, I found a place to mount this uh, relay. I'm gonna give you a close up here. So right here, I'm just gonna attach it with some zip ties. Uh, believe it or not, this area right here, this panel, uh, there's a big, it's offset quite a ways, and there's plenty of room in there. It's not even touching the panel when the panel pops on. So I'll be able to uh, run my wire, hook my wires up, and so that's going to be our next step. So I found my place. We've got our tap-in location and a place to mount this. So let's go ahead and tap into the blue line, and then we'll go ahead and, and uh, wire up the rest of the, the unit. Now, as far as these posi taps go, this, uh, they come in different sizes. The red one here is for your smaller gauge wires, and the blue one is for the larger gauge ones. So uh, I was able to, uh, this small wire here, it's best to utilize the small one, and uh, these, this gauge here is easy to tap into. So it's going to work out great, but uh, they do come in different sizes for whatever gauge wire you need to tap into. So what we're going to do, we've slid, slid this over the wire that we want to tap into. Now I'll take the portion with the prong. Okay, we punctured the wire there. Now we're going to take this portion, tighten that up. Now we have a tight fit. Okay, our next step is to run the uh, battery power uh, up to the, the relay. And that is with the, uh, the red wire here. So we need to connect the red wire uh, to the positive here on the battery. And then the uh, white one is, uh, goes to the ground. So we'll do that. So that's our next step. So right now I'm going to disconnect the battery so uh, I can hook up uh, some leads to it. I'll disconnect the negative first. disconnect positive here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a little bit of sandpaper and uh, clean that off just a little bit. with the uh, like little USB uh, port. They did bring, give me a little bit of wire, a connector uh, to hook to the battery, a fuse, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and hook that up to the red there. The issue with these batteries is a little nut drops to the bottom, and then when you start putting terminals on top, they're not the threads are not long enough to engage it. So 
put a screwdriver there at the bottom, lift up on that screw, you might be able to engage it. That screwdriver's too big. So I'm gonna have to get something smaller. Okay, I've got my relay hooked up, and uh, this is the, the last thing I need to do is actually run the wires from the relay and the ground uh, up to the USB port. And to uh, check to see if uh, we've got things hooked up correct, using the continuity uh, device here, the trouble light, I touch that feed right there, and you see the light don't turn on. So I have nothing going there right now. So let's turn the ignition on. So now I've turned the ignition on. Now I have power to that wire right there. So that'll be the power wire going up to the USB port. So that's our next step is to run that wire. Okay, now I've got to make me a wiring harness uh, to go from the uh, relay up to the USB port. I just happen to have a coil of wires and some female connectors. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, connect uh, the wires to these female connectors that will go uh, to the male ends of the USB port. Okay, our next step is to mount uh, the USB port. I've got it in place. I've got the wire connections there. Next step is to run that wiring, the wire, along the wiring harness and then along the frame here. And I'll bring it back and we'll hook it up to the battery here. I've got my uh, USB port in, and the uh, line goes along here, attached to the frame, down here. I'm tapped into the uh, tail light circuit to initiate the relay there, and then the output goes up uh, to the top. Up here at the top, you'll notice when I turn the uh, ignition switch on, I've got power. And you also have a little switch there you can turn the lights off. It doesn't turn the power off to the uh, USB ports, but it does turn the light off. So when I turn the ignition off, power is cut uh, from the relay, and our USB port uh, is not functional at this time. So uh, now it's time to uh, just button the uh, motorcycle back up. I'll put the panels back on, and uh, we'll take a look at it. Well, I got the bike all back together. Power supply is working as a... Uh, it's supposed to be. Got the panels on, and we're ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to hit the trails, and uh, got plenty of power. Don't have to worry about my phone uh, going out or my charge on my camera getting low. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.